there are currently three types of effects that we call animations, comments, and playback functions. All of these elements can be used inline and as block level elements. Every effect is defined by two braces. Animations are only visible, and comments are read aloud in presentation or slides mode. If you set the mode to textbook, then all animations and comments will be displayed on one slide where you have placed them within the document. In the other two modes, they are revealed step by step with each click. You need to balance these features properly so that your course can be read in textbook mode and used for presentations and more. Animations are defined by two curly braces, one starting and one optional ending number. They can be associated with single blocks, multiple blocks, and also inline elements. Animations can be associated with blocks by adding two curly braces above the block. We recommend indenting the animation definition by at least four spaces. Other markdown renderers will highlight this as code, making it easier to read. Use a starting and an ending number, if you want the element to disappear at a certain point. Similarly to quizzes, as described in section quiz solution, you can group multiple markdown blocks by lines of asterisks. Simply add the curly braces with the animation definition above the upper line. Blocks can also have a starting and disappearing number. Depending on your preferred style, you can also use HTML tags to group blocks. These will then be displayed slightly differently on GitHub. Inline effects can be used in nearly all LIA script elements. In this case, you will have to unpack the curly braces. The first pair surrounds the animation definition, while the second pair contains all inline elements that should appear and or disappear. Go to animation step 1. Go to animation step 2. Animations can also be grouped freely, allowing one multi-block animation to contain multiple block animations, and one block can also contain further inline animations. Any kind of CSS can also be added to an animation, as described in the section on custom styling. Additionally, we have included an additional CSS stylesheet in the main HTML comment of this document. This will load animate CSS, but you can use any other CSS library or custom styling as well. The idea of a comment is that they should be associated with animations. When animation is revealed, then the comment is read aloud. Similar to a PowerPoint presentation, when one element appears and the presenter says something, then clicks and the next element appears and is also commented. Thus, a comment is a paragraph that is marked by two sets of curly braces, which contain a number, and two dashes around the braces. If multiple comments have the same number, then they will be replayed in the order of appearance. This will be spoken out loud. This will be spoken out loud too, but at animation step 2. Don, forget me. If you change the presentation mode, you will notice that these comments will be displayed in place in textbook mode. In slides mode, they will also be presented to the user, while they will be hidden in presentation mode. If you switch off the sound, then this is the mode that can be used for presenting content, while the others can be used for self-studying.
But where does the voice come from? In Lia script, within the initial comment, you can use the language macro to define the document translation and narrator to define the default voice. Currently, we are using responsive voice as a backup solution if your browser does not support text-to-speech. Otherwise, your default browser and operating system text-to-speech is utilized, which can vary across browsers and systems. Within the settings, it is possible to switch between the browser and backup TTS. It is possible to change the narrator on different layers, globally within the main comment tag, per slide, and also per comment, by inserting the voice into the comment definition. The entire markdown paragraph right below the effect definition in double minus notation is sent to responsive voice to speak the text out loud in presentation or slides mode. Markdown ist eine vereinfachte Auszeichnungssprache, die von John Gruber und Aaron Swartz entworfen und im Dezember 2004 mit Version 1.0.1 spezifiziert. Punkt, Punkt, Punkt. Для торжества зла достаточно бездействия хороших людей. Sometimes. It might be necessary to add a comment or to read a part aloud to underline a certain point, which might be necessary in the narrated mode but not in the textbook. Therefore, it is possible to put your TTS output into simple HTML comments. This won't be shown to anyone and also not visible on most other markdown parses and renderers. Speak this out, but do not show it to anyone. If you click on the language settings, you can either click on the element, Translate with Google, Experimental, and select another language. In this case, a JavaScript library will be injected that implements the translation feature. As you can see from the example, not all parts will be translated. Code blocks will not be translated by default, as well as comments that have been marked with another voice than the default. These comments remain as they are. While Lia Script tries to find an appropriate voice for the new language and gender, you can attach specific parameters to the comment that prohibit or enforce translation. By default, Google will search for the class definition translate or no translate. But other external browser plugins might also take into account the HTML5 attribute translate. So it is always good to use both definitions. I will not be translated. Sie können dem Kommentar bestimmte Parameter hinzufügen, die eine Übersetzung verbieten oder Для торжества зла достаточно бездействия хороших людей. Sie können diese Sprachattribute an jede Art von Markdown Block oder Inline Sie können Since text to speech output is integrated into the Lia script notation, it can be intentionally used for language learners. Simply add a stylized play button to the effect definition to indicate what should be spoken out loud. You can also use different voices. This entire paragraph will be spoken out loud. But in this case, this can also be combined with a couple of different markdown elements whether it makes sense or not. And as introduced for animations, you can also group multiple blocks together. Simply add as many markdown blocks between two lines of asterisks. And they will be interpreted as one larger block.
this entire paragraph will be spoken out loud. But in this case, this can also be combined with a couple of different markdown elements whether it makes sense or not. As an alternative, you can also use an HTML tag like less than section greater than or less than div greater than to group blocks. The Lear script result will remain the same, but it will be rendered differently on other markdown interpreters. Like in the presented example, the exclamation will not interfere with the table definition. And as presented before, you can also use inlining for playback elements. As it was used for animations, by simply using two pairs of braces. Depending on your preferences and the current context, it is also possible to define the stylized play button with a vertical line or an exclamation mark. Like in the presented example, the exclamation will not the result is displayed within the table. All elements can be played on demand. I go. Ich gehe. Ja, hajo. Edhibu. You go. Мы ходим. Tadhibu. Edhibu. If you only want to show the play buttons but not the text, it is possible to use some HTML tricks. The easiest way is to put your text into an HTML element and to remove it from the screen by using a span whose content is shifted off the screen. Simply styling the element with display. None will not work. Since the TTS function requires the text to be rendered within the DOM. And the translation via Google will not work if the element is not visible. But, since it is possible to define custom macros, we can also apply a more elegant way. We define a set of local macros directly within a comment attached to the current heading. The at play macro has two parameters, one for the voice and the other for the text. The other macros are simply shortcuts for the voice that pass the text as the second parameter to the at play macro. Within the Arabic macro, it is also possible to define the gender of the narrator. The outcome is a table with playback buttons only, where the text is concealed, and the primary language will be translated while the other languages remain unchanged. I go. Du gehst. Ты ходишь. Ты гибу. Wir gehen. Мы ходим. They go. Since we are utilizing the double braces notation for playback elements, this can also be combined with animations by adding appearance and disappearance numbers. Depending on the current state of the animation, this will result in different sentences. You need to keep in mind that this will function as intended only if the user is not in textbook mode. Otherwise, all elements will be read out loud, and nothing will be hidden. This is an example where I go to work. I am going. You need. I go. This is an example where I am going to work.